Be'ezrat Hashem Yitbarach. We are going to start to learn laws of Pesach. There are a lot of halachot. Normally such class will take place on Shabbat HaGadol as what is supposed to be a basic drasha of Shabbat HaGadol for hours on end. The Rav Kihila, Talmudah Hachemim of the community have to get up and speak. Not drashot, midrashim, and stories, and on, but pretty much more like halakha, down to what people should be doing. What should be done, what should not be done. So we're going to start from right, the basic, which is pretty much the bidikat chametz. Which is the bidikat chametz. And then we'll get to actual talking about the preparation of the house for Pesach. So we have, we all know, as soon as Pulim passes, there's already an obligation to clean up your house for Pesach. If you're planning on to be at home. Again, if a person is planning on to be home, he has an obligation to clean up his house as soon as Purim. 30 days before Pesach, the obligation of cleaning up your house kicks in. If you're planning on to be home. Those people are not planning on to be home and they normally lock up and go. They could choose to do spring cleaning, clean up whatever they can. But if they choose, they feel that they are not up to it and they're going away and they're locking up their house and they're not coming back home at all. They're going away. They... Whatever it is, the hotel, parents, uh, in-laws, and other places they go to. In such cases, we'll go into detail exactly what could be done. So people that are planning on to stay home, they have to clean up the house thoroughly. Thorough cleaning does not mean looking for cleaning for dust, cleaning for dirt. You are cleaning up your house from chametz. Anything that is edible, meaning... A lot of people that care for a crumb, they'll pick up a crumb and eat it too. Some people care for something which is the size of a Cheerios and up, they will eat that too. Some people go some bigger things. So our Chachamim of the, of the blessed memory, they knew that a person is not going to be able to hold himself from eating chametz because he is used to eating chametz all year round. For that reason, they said, maybe a person is going to find a something delicious that he would normally go for, and because he's used to eating it, without even being aware of what he's doing, he just might just go for it and eat it. Not remembering that today is Pesach, and they would go ahead and eat, go ahead and eat the chametz that is in the house. For that reason, Chachamim said, every person is obligated to clean up the house. So we, Baruch Hashem, what we have is that the ladies of the house, they do the prep, they clean up the entire place, we obviously assist them with every bit of help possible. Like we didn't just find them on the street. We picked them up from their house. Their mothers, Baruch Hashem, raised them for us. The parents raised them for us. And Baruch Hashem, we have to provide and do everything we can to assist them and make it as easy as possible to clean up the house. So they usually prep the whole thing. Women could do the Bidikal Hametz also. Children could do Bidikal Hametz also. But we still would like to have men, men above age, Bar Mitzvah and An, to actually go ahead and clean up. To do the actual Bidikal Hametz. We'll explain why. So let's talk about places that need to be cleaned up. The places that have to be cleaned up are the premises where you live. The places that have to be cleaned are the premises where you work. The business place. The places that have to be cleaned is the car you drive. Baruch Hashem, a lot of us do allow food in the car. Some people say no, no food in the car. But even those people who say no food in the car, they do put food in the trunk when they go shopping. Even those people who say no food in the car, they have those emergency sandwiches wrapped up in a glove compartment. Or they have those cup holders, coffee holders, right, for to drink. So they have all that. So all this is something to be aware of that you need to clean up. A lot of people have to clean up their backyards. Baruch Hashem, a lot of people make barbecues. And they have a, a pool, they have people over, and they eat. It's a normal, a normal thing for them to have 
the burgers, the buns, the hot dog buns, and the and etc. Lipyoshka, right? Some uh, other things that they have. All these places need to be cleaned up. Any premises which belong to you, you are responsible to clean up. Obviously, if you rent out the premises to somebody else, you don't have the obligation to clean that. Whoever has the keys to the premises is the person to go and to actually clean up that place. Okay? Now, if you own a bus company, you got to clean up every single bus. You own Bezrat Hashem. You own a aviation, right? You own the JetBlue, right? Or Jet Pink, whatever it is that you own, right? All those places have to be cleaned up as well. Uh, you have a boat, a yacht. I don't know what you draw, what you have. So you have Bezrat Hashem soon, right? First thing we get a little boat, so swimming pool, right? First the swimming pool, then I get into the ocean. Okay. Whatever it is that you own has to be cleaned up. Now, what has to be cleaned up, obviously, is all the pockets in the house. Every single pocket you clean up, you'll be surprised how much money you're going to find there. Say, oh, I didn't know I have that too. So you have to make sure you clean up the pockets, especially the kids. School bags, Baruch Hashem, you open up, you find there. Oh, what you find there? Baruch Hashem. I tell you, my car gets always dirty and clean for one simple reason. As soon as the kids walk into the car, it's a carpool. They open up their bag. I say, oi, va, voy. I have to clean up the car. Because everything comes out. Okay. They look for their lunch or their leftover snacks or whatever it is that they have. They dive in. And when they dive in, everything comes out. Okay. Then you have to make sure you clean up all the places where the kids normally hide things. If we have little kids, Baruch we all do. We have grandkids, Bezrat Hashem, all of us will have. And then they have great grandchildren. You have to make sure you know they hide things. Look under their pillows, look inside their pillowcases, look under their blankets, look under their beds, look in their closets. You will find everything. Now, you have to make sure you clean up all those places, prep the place for the actual Bidikat Hametz. This year, Bidikat Hametz is going to be Bezrat Hashem on Thursday night, right? That is the time we're going to be doing Bidikat Hametz. Now, when do we start doing Bidikat Hametz? It's exactly at Tzedek Kohavim. When three stars come out, that is the time when you, you have the obligation to clean up. A person is not allowed to go anywhere that evening until he does his B'dikat Hametz. Though a lot of people, and I would say, I can't say unfortunately, we do have a lot of people who like to respect the people that passed on. And a lot of people who pass on during Pesach time, a lot of people make their Yushua, especially if it's grandparents, great-grandparents, they make their yushuos, right? They get to get together together, make uh, combined yushuos, and they go to restaurants. When they do it, little bit of I'd like to advise everyone, myself, and everybody else that's here, if you do have somebody that you'd like to remember, you want to do a yushuo, you're anyways doing it early. Why do it on the night of Bidikat Hametz? Do it the night before. Do it two, three days earlier. Do, you anyways doing it early. Do it early. Don't leave it for later. There's no point in it. You are causing many people to do the Avela of not doing Bidikat Hamed sometimes. Once the 14th of Nisan kicks in, that is the time when you have the obligation to do Bidikat Hamed. You can't be busy with anything already half hour before Bidikat Hamed. You already cannot have a meal. You cannot plop down and sit down and go into a sugya, sit down and learn Gemara. Or have your shiurim. There's many discusses in Alakha. Allowed, not allowed. Bottom line. Get the bidika out of your way. And then go do whatever you want. Especially people that go out and they have a set meal. They start drinking a little. And they go to Yeshua, Lachaim, Lachaim. And then jinx up. You know, you come home. You hit the bed. You fall asleep. And you say, you know, forget about bidika and for this year. And you're causing more problems for yourself. Now. The place is to do B'dikat Hametz. And that night, you have to do B'dikat Hametz in all the premises that you own. That night, which means you have to clean up, you have to do B'dikat How is B'dikat Hametz performed? So, Bezrat Hashem, this year, next week, next week, Thursday night, you will do B'dikat Hametz. What you do is at 8.15 in the evening, you take a candle, a wax candle, paraffin, Shava, you take these type of candles and you go to the light of the candle. You, a candle, we, we do Kabbalistically, we take a knife, 
we take a candle, we take a plate, take those aluminum trays, put salt in them, and then a lot of people have the custom of putting out the bread all over the house. They put 10 pieces of bread, which are prepared ahead of time. I always tell people, be smart. A lot of times, till the last minute you come, all the bread is eaten up, and then you say, oh, I don't have 10 pieces of bread, what am I gonna do? A little compartment in the freezer, have those 10 sandwich bags, little pieces of bread inside there. Please don't put bagels. Don't put lachmaniot, don't put big chalas inside. Say this, you know, I'm looking for chametz, I want it to be easy to find, about tashrit, a waste. So please make sure you take 10, 10 small pieces of bread, put them, tie them into a sandwich bag, and then take these 10 pieces, this is not hide and go seek. And if the kids are involved, you please ask your kids, go together with your kids, say, listen, this is not a time to cause problems. Because if they hide these 10 pieces of bread and you don't find them, you have an obligation to keep going. And you can keep going, like the energizer battery, battery right? Never runs out, right? <clears throat> Keeps going and going, right? So please, make us a do, do, do everybody a favor. Make sure these 10 pieces of bread don't, do not end up becoming a hide and, hide and go seek. Put them in obvious places where normally, normally you eat, you eat chametz there. You bring in chametz there. Do not hide these pieces of bread under a bed, under a couch. Nobody eats under a couch. Nobody eats under a bed. Unless they're hiding things. Nobody eats in place like, you know, in a closet all the way on top. You know, where, which is not within the reach of people. People eat in regular places. Put the pieces of bread where it's normal within the reach. The places to check. We will talk about right now. Now, at, at the onset of the Bidikat Hametz, you have to remember one thing. You have to all come to a point of agreeing on one thing. Everybody is assisting in Bidikat Hametz. There is no talking from the time you start doing Bidikat Hametz until the end of it. The only thing you can talk about, right, after you found the first piece of bread, is something that pertains to, to Bidikat Hametz only. Don't talk about a basketball game. Don't talk about a soccer game. Don't talk about the bets you had. Don't talk about, you know, the construction that you've just completed or the glasses you sold or whatever it is. Make sure it pertains to, if it needs to be, Medigat Hametz only. Now, it's when... Related. Yes, related to the mitzvah. Even that preferable, not talk at all. Now, you could take, you make a bracha. You make a bracha on the, for the search of Hametz. You say a bracha of Baruch Atah Hashem Elokeinu Melech HaOlam you have the candle lit and you go around the house with a candle. Okay, a lot of people re pre prefer not to use the candle. We know that in the Takana, when Chachamim instituted the law, people will say they didn't have electricity. Regardless of what they had or what they didn't have, take a candle. Start with the candle. If the candle, the candle bothers you, extinguish it and then go with the flashlight. Go around the house with a candle or go around the house with a flashlight. You have to have as much light possible. You don't have to shut off any lights. On the contrary, if you have those uh, big lights, projectors, you know, to light up the place, please turn them on. The more light you have, the better it is. The reason why we use a candle or we use a small flashlight is to get into those places that are narrow, <coughs> places that are very small to get into. That is the place why we have to go with the candle so we could look inside to see what we have in the hiding. Now, um, I beg you all, Biul Hametz is a time throughout history known to be many houses went in flames. Please, I beg you, don't give a candle to a little kid. It's irresponsibility. You have to make sure that the elderly person, someone who's older, is the one that holds on to the candle. And you go around the house with a candle. Please do not go with the candle near the drapes. Next to the curtains. It's a big no. Don't do that. Don't do that. Please be careful. Yes? Does it have to be throughout the whole house, the 10 pieces, or in one room? Okay. The pieces of bread you put is specifically, precisely, only in those places where you eat chametz and where you store chametz. Or where you bring in their chametz. Mm -hmm. Nowhere else do you put those 10 pieces of bread. Now, where do we go checking? We go searching specifically, I'll tell you where. On your table. Rabbi told Rabbi, I cleaned the table. I already have my Pesach dishes on the table. I don't care. It's a normal place where Hametz is placed. You can put all your dishes there, but a little kid will come by 
Take a piece of bread and put there. Say, you know what? I always eat by a table. And you'll surprise you. You'll find something on the table. So many people were surprised how they found tableware. Spoons, forks, plates. And a Pesach table. Things that were used throughout the year. Chametz closet. So what happened? How did this happen? Stories in Lakewood. How somebody called up. I said, Rabbi, what do I do? The cleaning lady. She started to wash. The, 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 it ran. The cycle. The, the dishwasher. Aha, uh -huh. it has, uh, I found, we found spoons, chametz, forks, spoons. What do we do? I said, okay, very good. You have to put away these dishes. You can't use them because it's all chametz. It's chuzar v'neor. There's heat. There's uh, many reasons for why to be extra careful. So please be careful. So places to check again is your table. Places to check is your chairs. Places to check under the table, under your chairs. The kitchen cabinets. The kitchen closet, the kitchen drawers, the refrigerator, the freezer, the oven, the stove top, the counters. All these places are normal places where people keep chametz. So these are the places people have to go with a candle, searching for these things, making sure that there's no chametz left over there. Now the places to check is your car trunk, your trunk of your car, the car itself. Take a flashlight in your car. Don't go with the candle there. Or you do a real build chametz. Your car is going to go in flames. Chas so now, you go with the flashlight and you have to look in all those places. If you have your barbecue grill area where you're grilling stuff, that's a place to go there with a the candle or with a flashlight. you got to search all those places. Your office, you eat working at work. You have a table where you eat. You have to make sure all those places get searched with a candle. And the time to do it is nighttime. Not early on. You have to do it there. This is the way it's been done for, gener for, for many, many years. Okay? This is the way to search for chametz. So please check everywhere where normally you bring in their chametz and you store chametz. Don't assume. Don't make these uh, strong assumptions. Oh no, I'm sure there's nothing there. You'll find Dushpere, Mantu, Gosh Gijer, everything in that freezer. Everything. Say, so, no, that compartment, I never put anything there. You'll be surprised. It's a refrigerator. Things get there. Please look for things. You will find. Those are the places to clean. Once Bidikat Hametz is done, you, whatever you found, you put it in a bag and you store it in a safe place. Lock the place where the Hametz is going to be. Now, there is still... Now, the, what you do is at the end of the completion of the Bidikat Hametz, you have to make sure you say a what's called a Bitul. It's called Kol Hamira. No. Everybody should say it in the language that he understands. Now, you, the person that owns the chametz and is the owner of the household should be the one to say the, the, the bitul, kol chamila, any dough, unleavened dough, whatever it is, the seol uh, chametz that I have, I, that he has to say it specific way. There's a weight, there's a bitul that you say at night, there's a bitul that you say at day by the burning. So at night you say all the chametz that I did not find and I didn't see. At night, I didn't see and I didn't, because what you saw and what you found, you still want. It's what you didn't see and you didn't find, you do a bitul, you annul that. The next day, when you burn the chametz, after four hours are complete, in the fifth hour you burn, the fifth hour of the morning, that is the time when you're going to say a bitul, you're going to say any chametz that I saw, I didn't see, I found, I didn't find. Then you have to say double the for everything, and you say you want to be considered afkir, kafra da'ara, should be annulled, and not desired, not wanted. Anybody who wants it, please take it. It's up for grabs. Okay? This is pretty much the idea of how to deal with the chametz. Now, those people who have businesses that run throughout Pesach, you have to figure out if you have workers that come into your premises to do work and they eat chametz, please go over to the rabbi and ask him how to deal with the situation where the nanju eats the bread, eats the chametz, and stuff is left on the table, stuff falls on the floor, or you're driving a car and the person got into your car, he wants to eat chametz. How to deal with all these situations? You have to be making sure, realizing that... The, hours, it is true, but if, if whatever drops and falls, he abandons, he gives up. And your floor automatically acquires it. The premises belong to you. So you have to figure out what to do. Go, not for now. Go over after class, ask what to do, and the, the, there are suggestions. Mm -hmm. There are suggestions. Okay, let's proceed further. What about work? Huh? How about in your store, in your office? Do you have going workers? We, we, after class, I'll explain to you what needs to be done. 
go over and ask because you, this this it it has a lot of reasons how to there's a way how to figure out the problem. Okay, now. Okay, there are certain candles that we are not to use, are those candles that leave residue that does, does not get off easily. For example, oil candles or candles made out of fat, right? candles, all these things that if they drip, the person is not going to do bidikat chametz, he's going to do bidikat, uh, you know, he's going to be looking for the candle, making sure it doesn't drip anywhere. He's going to forget about his whole bidikat chametz, he won't do it properly, okay? Um, you have to make sure that you concentrate only on doing bidika, nothing else. With one belacha, you can chew. You could you could check many many places. If a balabite, a person that owns many places, and there are people assisting him in cleaning, if he is involved in the cleaning itself, he could say the, the initial bracha. He says everybody answers amen and runs to check their place. Now, if balabite for whatever reason does not check at all, and his kids want to do the job, whatever reason he's not feeling well. So if he is not the one who's doing the bidika, if he's not doing the bidika, he has to be the one to, the shaliach should say the bidika, he shouldn't say the bidika at all. Okay? That is that. Now the owner of the household should say the bitu. If the owner himself, he does not say the annulling, he doesn't annul the chametz, the owner himself, whoever annuls it has to say it in the, in the right language. Whatever belongs to my husband, Whatever belongs to my father, whatever belongs to, right, the the owner. There's a special way how to say bitul. If he's not saying it himself, somebody else should say it for him. Okay. So the time to eat chametz this year is going to be about 10:15 in the morning, right? Last time Friday, 10:15. Last time to eat chametz, and by 11 o'clock or so, you're supposed to have it all burnt. We do have a place over here on the side. They have a bucket, metal bucket. We burn chametz. Anybody who wants to come to burn chametz over here, he can go ahead and do that. Okay, once your house is cleaned for chametz and everything is done, the next thing we have to be concerned about is the actual cleaning of the kitchen and the, uh, the table, the chairs, the places where we're going to eat our Pesach meals. We have to make sure that all those places are properly clean. So let's talk about one thing at a time. Now, this is what pertains to the ladies, but the men do have to be on top of the situation, making sure no mistakes are made. For those people who have sets of dishes, pots, pans, uh, 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 the, the, what's his name, racks, or whatever it is that they use for cooking, it gets a little easier. But those people who like to use whatever they use throughout the year, and they want to want to kosher their dishes. There are many many things that people have to know when it comes to kosher. Since we all are not professionals when it comes to doing the actual kosher, you can't you if you are not well knowledgeable about how the the procession is done, don't do it if you don't know how to do it. You have to be a professional knowing how to do it. You could get a Tomit Chacham, who knows how to do this, will come to assist you and show you how things are done so you get an idea before you actually go home and get hands on on the actual training and doing it the right way. So let's go one thing at a time in order to understand how everything is done. The first thing we have to talk about is the plates in the house. Tableware. You have plates. There's different, many different types of plates. There are plates that are made out of porcelain. There are plates that are made out of china. There's many different types of plates. So china and porcelain are not kosherable. Okay? They're not kosherable at all. Because they are more or less made like cheres, earthenware. These things are not kosherable. You cannot kosher these things. So with these type of things, you have to put them away and have different set of dishes of plates cups that the teacups or whatever they have it's porcelain in china is not cashable at all you put that away metal dishes if you have dishes that are made out of metal okay these things are cashable you have dishes made out of stone these things are cashable you have dishes that are made out of wood these things are kosherable. 
There's a way how to kasher every single one. Now, if these things are, if these things are that that come in contact with hot food, for example, a lot of people have a big metal dish that they pour hot food from the pot straight onto the dish. Okay? These type of things, you have to do a irui. Let me explain clearly. If it goes from the actual pot, hot pot, and you pour onto a dish, like a lot of us like to do this, we have nontoki, right? Or we have bread, usually but more or less dry, we cut it in half, we put it on a plate, and then we have the kawo or whatever something hot, we pour right on it. So these type of things, since you pour hot things onto them, the way you made it chametz, that is the way how to undo it, to undo the chametz. So if you have metal dishes, stone dishes, wooden dishes, uh, or you have, uh, we'll talk about glass afterwards. So you have, these things are kasherable. The way to, the way you made it chametz is the way to undo it chametz. So since I pour hot stuff on it, I would have to take a hot pot of boiling water and just pour on it. And the way I pour, I have to pour constantly on every part of that surface of that dish. Which we, it cannot just go one time I pour and water just jumps on it, splashes all over, kosher. No. Constant pouring. Constant pouring on every inch of that metal dish. Can you just that into a stone dish. Water? You don't have to. Could you? you could. You don't have to. Like you don't have to. We'll talk about what needs to. What you don't have to, make it as easy as possible. It's not easy to do all the Hagalah constantly. Because every time it cools off, you're running into a problem. Okay. Am I walking? Ah. Shalom Aleichem, I'm walking. Sorry, I'm late. It's late in there. Okay. So let's, let's continue. So again. So those dishes that you pour, think the way you make it chametz is the way to undo it from being chametz. If I have, this is as far as plates. Let's talk about the next thing. The next thing we have is, you have the sikh, right? The sikh and the setki, right? Skewers, setki, the racks that we put on the mangal and the mangal itself. So the way they became chametz, that is the way to make them not chametz. Since these things go on fire, so the way they absorb chametz is through fire, that is how you take it away. You make it kosher the same way, which means you're going to have to make a libun. You take a torch and or, or you put it into you put it into a fire that's burning, a bonfire, whatever, and keep it there long enough where it doesn't have to actually turn red, red. You have to make sure that it gets enough heat the way it was on the fire. Same amount of heat. The way it becomes chametz, that is how you undo it from being chametz. Now, all these things, setki and all the sikh, you have to clean it very well. What about mangal? Mangal, you have to put, fill it up with charcoal, light it up. It, 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 what it does is it burns out all the chametz and you could use your mangal afterwards. That's simple? That's simple. Mm. Same thing with sikh? Sikh in the same thing. Just watch. You could, you, a lot of people what they do is they take the sikh and they throw it inside their self clean oven and they leave it there. It the you could throw it into the charcoal or it burn too. Why not? While it's happening. Or you could take a torch, go to Home Depot, buy a torch and just burn them. Yeah, nasi nakawo. That is the kavod who did what prophet talk about. Okay, now, now all these kashering processions have to be done before Pesach. All the kashering of these dishes have to be done before Pesach, not during Pesach. During Pesach, it's too late. Before Pesach, it's good. During Pesach, no good. Okay, another thing: pots and pans. Bauch Hashem, a lot of the ladies like to have their own pot, their own pans that they use. Pots and pans, since they were on fire, the kashering process, and we know that they were on fire with liquid. Since it's done with liquid, the way to kasher them is also through liquid. You have a bigger pot, okay, bigger pot. 
that is on high flame. The water is bubbling. While the water is bubbling, you have a glove, that right, that could protect your hand from burning. You put on that glove, right, say for hot water. You hold the dish. Now, to kosher the, the, these type of pots and pans, requirement, you have to wait 24 hours without using them. 24 hours of no use. After 24 hours passed, you have to make sure that the pot and pan is speak and span clean. When I say clean, you have to get into every crevice, every fold that's there, clean out everything that's there. Clean it up. Once the pot is clean, the best thing is to use a shumanit. Spray it outside somewhere. Put a mask on. It's very to be safe. Then let wash it very well. You see it's spotless. Spotless. Take it. Dip it into hot water one time. Take it out. If it doesn't fit into a pot in one shot, you could do it half-half, okay? If it doesn't fit into a pot, one time, half-half. First do one side, take it out, then the second side. Once the hagala is finished, once you dip it into hot water, then you have to pour cold, better to pour cold water on it, okay? Cool it off right away, seal it. Cold water right away. Knives. Kitchen knives, those knives that we use to cut up and what and usually use hot, cold, you have to clean them very well, not use them for 24 hours. Clean them very well, and the same thing, dip it into hot water. Now, the way to dip knives and those things, the easiest thing is take the what's the name, the aluminum tray. That's the big one, the biggest one you have, heavy duty. And then you put it on the fire, you put on two burners. You take a knife, dip it one time, take it out. Because it, 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 the pots n normally d don't usually fit the whole thing inside in one shot. So you just put it there, your kafkil, your kavlis, or your, your spatulas, your... Uh, your uh... Yeah, you can't do this anymore, right? Yeah. No, it's in, out. How, how long is it going to get it goes up? Two, three seconds. No, 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 you put it in, you take it out. No, no, no. No, no, it just pulls, uh, spits it out. Because it's after 24 hours, everything is tam pagum. It's not the actual real taste. So you just spits it out and you're good to go. Remember that pertains to all those utensils, the ones with the silicone, the rubber, the metal, yes. wood. Silicone, rubber, you have to clean those areas very well, dip it in, take it out. What about spilling hot water on it? Spilling hot water on it, if it's a pot or pan, won't help you. No, knives. A knife will not help you. You have to do a gala. Knives have to be done a gala, and you even have to immerse in the hot water the knife, the handle also in there after it's cleaned very well. No, you could do one, one at a time. It's easy to buy new ones. One, one, one. No, you could do half half also if it doesn't fit in. It's fine. You could do half half. Especially if those big pots or whatever, you half half is perfect. On? Within 24 hours, it's not done. No. You're going to create more problems. Because the taste within 24 hours is fresh. You can't do that. Go into the water, then jump right back in. You're going to make problems. It's going to become not in time, but not in time. It's issues. It's not so simple. Don't do it within 24 hours. The taste is fresh. After 24 hours, the taste is not fresh. That is the time to do it. Okay? You do. You have to do. You could do two dishes at the same time. Put it in, take it out. Now. Every time you put in, you take out, you know the water cools off. Right. You got to close this, the lid again, let the thing boil up again. The water has to be constantly shooting uh, bubbles, bubbling up now constantly, when in, in order for you to do the immersion and taking it out. Right. Yes? What does this kind of pot need to be that you're using for the immersion? Any pot. Could be chametz, not chametz, no difference. Question. Yes? You could do that if they're not uh, tightly, t t tightly sitting in there. If they're loose, like you could. If they're loose, put it in, take it out. But you have to make sure that the water doesn't cool off. Have to make sure the water is hot. Okay. As long as you have it worked out. Okay. What about... Okay. Other things that are not used in heat, for example. Your tableware, the spoons, the forks, those n the table knives that are not used in the kitchen, used by a table. Those are always get the heat of klisheni. So you do them klisheni also. You could take hot water from the teapot, put it into a, another pot, 
Take it and just pour on them. And it crashes instantly. Okay? You don't need to do from the from the from the off the fire right on them. You could do it from another pot. Another dish. Fill up another dish and just pour on it. And it's all kosher to go. Okay, what about frying? We know that things that are used for frying, also, agala, you clean it very well, you have a frying pan that you fry schnitzel, or you make chalpak, or you make the fish, right? You always see it with some flour you put over there. So these things also, even if it's frying, we are accustomed not to do libun, not to burn it. You could do agala, clean it very well, agala, you're good to go. You, uh, uh, shumanit works, does miracles. If it doesn't clean off, you can't cash it. Anything that you try cleaning, it doesn't clean off, you cannot cash it. Just put it away, get another one. Okay, another one. What about... I spoke about this. Oh, you have a lot of dishes that have the imalia, you know that white uh, uh, lining that goes right on it. The coating, white coating. So those things already, they, they advise people to do agala three times. If it's used on fire, if you take put directly on fire, use it clearly shown, you have to do agala three times. Okay? That is, the, if you did it one time, it's okay. But preferable to do agala three times, deeper into, a cold, into hot water. Okay? All glass dishes, if it's glass, Pyrex, or any type of glass that you have, and you use it inside the oven, outside the oven, you do not have to do agala. You have to clean it very well. Once all the residue is off, you wash it with cold water, you're good to go. 24 hours? Yes. No, no, you, no they don't absorb any taste. Don't need to wait 24 hours at all. As soon as you wash it, it's kosher. Now, some people are, some people are strict and they do do agala. They immerse it into hot water. I advise you, please don't wash it with cold water after you immerse it into hot water. Mm -hmm. It will explode. Be careful. The one that happens. What about all the things that we use for drinking only? We have cups, shot cups, right? Those glass shots. Or we have the use with the alcohol, right? Whiskey and uh, vodka. All different types of things. So, piola, if it's used for cold, anything, no matter what it's made of. If it's made, not hamets, nothing, nothing hot, you just wash it and you're good to go. So again, all those shot glasses, all those things you drink alcohol, you drink you drink cold water, no matter what it's made out of, you wash it very well, it's good to go. You could use it. Washing only, nothing else needed. Non-stick seal it. Any difference? Non-stick is a problem because we don't know what that layer that's right on top of it, what it's made out of, if it's kosherable or not. I don't know. I asked many years back about, first of all, it's not healthy. They already came to that conclusion man, for, for a while already. And those people who still do use it, make sure that, you know, Pesach, put it away. I don't know if it's kosherable. Now, what about our teapots? We have a teapot in the house. And we don't put anything inside there besides only cold water. I advise you, please, don't put any pita bread on top. You'll only create more problems for yourself. So we have a teapot over here. No matter what size it is. Teapot, you don't have to kosher. Wipe it down from the surface, make sure it's clean, it's good to go. You don't have to buy a special teapot for Pesach, please don't waste money. Use the same teapot you have, you could reuse it again, no problem. Okay? The urn, right? Yeah, the urn, the urn you have, not a problem. Another thing, what about countertops? Countertops, all different types of countertops, you could cash them. You clean them very well, you wipe it down. Now, if you choose to not cover them with anything at all, you have to do what's called purging, pour hot water. Constantly pouring hot water on top. A lot of people are scared if it's uh, something which is like this, which is covered with uh, farmica, which is easily, because of the glue or whatever, it can get ruined. Because you know it might get ruined, I'm afraid you won't do it the right way. So this type of counts, if you don't care, Pour hot water on it. If you care, then don't pour hot water on it. Just line it down with something. They sell in stores thick plastic roll runners. You just put it on top of it, you glue it, and you have that for you for Pesach. Some people have those uh, plastic countertops. They just put on top, glue it down, and they use that. Some people to do a heavy-duty aluminum foil. 
If you do align it with aluminum foil or any types of things that uh, heat does penetrate, and if water goes beneath, it might run into problems. Don't put anything hot on top of it. Okay? Another thing, the refrigerators. Oh, uh, sorry. Yes. The countertops, in your opinion, what's the safest way? Because we're talking about hot water here. Spill I just, I just, uh, the easiest thing is to bring those runners, plastic runners, and just cover it. Okay. Tape it out. Not pour hot water. So how would that be done? Because so you have to pour water on every inch of it non-stop to keep going running water running water hot put flat towel, towels on the floor tell your wife to leave the kitchen because you don't want her to do it when she's not home i'm sorry i don't mean to turn my back on you uh, so you pour hot water or the easiest thing is just cover it it's only seven eight days no big deal scrubbing will not do it scrubbing and cleaning your countertops do will not do it you have to pour hot water on it if you choose not to pour hot water on it for various reasons, just take those runners, they sell them. It's easy for eight days, cover it. After eight days, just take them or throw them away. What you, what or save it for next year. We are afraid of the taste, not the what surface. Yako, I don't I can I don't trust anyone that will tell me I was careful not to. As soon as you put it, you run into problems. Because we're talking about taste of chametz, choser v'neor, not choser v'neor. You're running into many machlokot. Please, safe and sorry, as they say. Do it the right way. Prevent it. Just run it, put a runner on top of it. Or put aluminum foil, heavy duty, two layers, and that's it. You're good to go. Now, let's go to the next thing. Um, refrigerators. Please, don't go crazy. Just wipe them down. Refrigerators, just wipe them down clean. Nothing else needed. Nothing. If you clean them, wipe them down very clean, nothing else needed to be done. Okay, another thing. Those uh, uh, dish drainers, people have a lot, they stack up their dishes on them. Clean them very well, wipe them down, you're good to go. Your dishwashers, dishwashers, run them two, three times, empty with uh, some soap, kosher Pesach. Okay, dishwashers, run it two, three times, kosher Pesach, throw a detergent. Huh? You could, you could wait 24 hours and just let it run three, two, three times. Put two, three times, two, three cycles, cleans up. So it has plastic grates or no? Huh? Does it matter if the grates inside the washer? Plastic or no plastic, you just let it run two, three times. It's good to go. Now, uh, another thing you have. People have coffee grinders in the house. Just clean them very well, you're good to go. Is all coffee for pressure? I don't know. If it's natural coffee grain with no taste, no nothing at all, straight coffee beans with no flavor infused, nothing, probably kosher, sure, it's not comments, but you have to make sure it is. So coffee grinders, you have to just wipe them down, clean them very well. Um, Tablecloths, tablecloths, just to throw cleaners or laundry, kosher. What about table mats? Table mats, just wipe them down clean. Take off everything that gets that sticks on them. Clean it very well, you're good to go. One second, Mechila. Okay, there is, didn't miss anything. Okay, let's talk about the oven itself. Okay, the oven and the, the stove top. The oven and the stove, okay, microwave, I'm sorry, I forgot. Do we gotta, do we gotta pull the oven out? No. You, no. You do. Ladies, please do not move the oven back and forth. Don't do it. I give you good advice. Why? Because the the gas, the the hose, if it cracks even a little, you'll have a gas leak in your house. Stop moving it back and forth. This is made for only people who come to fix the oven. It's meant for them to move. Even in the, every time we renew our gas ovens, we put new stoves into our house. Always the company brings you a new hose. They replace the old one because if these things crack, You'll run into problems. Please don't move your oven back. Just take a vacuum, attach a piece to it, and reach whatever is, whatever is within your reach. You don't have to move your refrigerators, your big cabinets. Don't have to move these things. No need for it. Okay? Just clean and normal. Okay. Uh, whatever you're able to. Now, what about the, the, the ovens? The ovens are tricky. It's very easy, though. Tricky, but easy. What's on the stove top? Line it down with aluminum, heavy duty aluminum. What's on the top? Clean it very well. Line it with aluminum. That is for the stove top. 
the grates and the burners, all those things, you do agala. You do agala. Okay? Very easy. Just immerse it in hot water, take it out, it's good to go. You don't have to burn them. Some people do that. Some people are careful. They're scared. They might have a fire. I've seen people have fires inside their uh, well, self-clean ovens. Please be careful. If you have experience, do it. If you don't have experience, you're afraid, don't do it. You, I've seen people do it. Some people leave their sick inside and they throw their grades inside. It's done. People do it. But you have to know what you're doing. Now, I'm sorry? It will be kosher Pesach, of course. Now, what about the, sto the stove on the inside? The stove itself. The stove itself, you have two types of stove. There's a self-clean, there's not a self-clean. There is electrical, and there is a gas. Now, let's talk about gas. Gas is like this. If you have a regular stove from the old ones that, burn, that run on gas, you have to not use it for 24 hours. You have to wipe it down, spray shumanit, wipe it down, clean very well. Don't forget to wear a mask when you spray shumanit. If you have one, please use one. You have to, so again, 24 hours. Afterwards, we wipe it down. After it's clean, you do the same thing with the grates, right? Those uh, shelves that go inside the oven. After, to, after this is done, it's clean. You turn on your oven for an hour on a high, high flame. High flame, one hour, you call Shema Pesach. If you have a self-clean oven and you don't want to clean it at all, advisable to do two hours of self-clean. Don't do more than that. Just two hours of self-clean. You leave it, let it burn, it's called Shema Pesach. Okay? Ha no, 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 you could shut it off. You, you could shut it off. You just press off and it shuts off. You won't be able to open the door. It's a safety. But even that, you can open the door. If you press the thing over there, it will open. Don't do it, though. Don't do it. Be careful. Now, what about electrical stoves? A lot of people go away for Pesach. They hit the land of Florida, and there they barely use any gas at all. They use glass only, right? You see the glass top, or they have electrical. You see the spiral, the old time. So if it's just a spiral, the old time, turn on the highest flame, you're good to go. Now, what about if the whole countertop, you see just uh, spots, four or five spots that turn red. Every time you turn on red, just wipe it down because it's glass. For us, for Adim, it's very easy. Wipe it down, it's glass. The inside, the oven, turn it on, self-clean, it will clean for you. It's very easy. If, if it, you see the spiral running inside, the old, old ovens, clean it very well. Shumani clean very well. Turn it on for an hour, it's kosher. What about microwaves? Microwaves... My, I, I try not to use one. But if you have a microwave and you do put it to a use in the house, very easy. What you do is don't use it for 24 hours. Take a cup. Put half a cup of water. Pour some dish detergent inside. Put it inside the, the microwave. Let it run five minutes. Once it hits, once it cooks for five minutes, you open the thing, wipe down all the Steam, whatever is inside, kosher or Pesach. Okay? Microwaves are the easiest to clean. I'm sorry? Plata. Oh, electrical plata. Electrical plata, Chamo Vadia, and other poskim, they say what you have to do is just have it uh, pour hot water on top, irui, hot water from the thing, pour hot water, wipe it, and you're good to go. Electrical, nothing will happen to it. Okay. Nothing's gonna happen to it. A black, you have to clean it. Scrub, clean, and then I guess uh, you could heat it up. But it, just use a new one because a lot of residue from doesn't really normally come off. Just have a new black. That's the easiest. So you have to cover it. Put, usually that piece is under the thing. So cover it, and if you listen, if not, if you're afraid. So buy a new one, buy a new one. Have one for Pesach, have one for all year round. The easiest. Not enough, not enough, you have to kasher. It has to be kasher. That's what they bring down the halakha. If there was an option of covering it, they would mention it. Uh, it has to be that way. Okay? Now, what about some people, somebody asked the question, people who have dentures, 
they put their teeth, yeah, they have pieces that they come out, they put in, all the people. So those, those just take a brush and brush them very well. Don't put, don't pour, don't put it into a pot of hot water. Don't pour hot water on it, the whole thing will fall apart. Can you pour hot water into the mouth? No, 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 please don't do that either. Don't do that. You should brush your teeth very well, by the way. Pesach, right before Pesach, clean out your, go for a good cleaning. Clean out everything you have. Pull everything out you have in between your teeth. Okay? Some people change their toothbrushes, yeah, for Pesach. I think if you clean it very well, hot water, it's good to go. Just clean it very well. It's good to replace them from time to time. Okay. Um... Okay. Yes. Oh, I forgot that part. Thank you for reminding me. What sinks? The sinks go as follows. I did mention before. Shh, shh, I did mention before that see that dishes that are made from porcelain and dishes that are made from China, those uh, uh, earthenware, right, are not casherable. For the sink, with the avad, they said it's okay to pour hot water on. You take you take a pot of hot water and just pour on it. Some people have an easier solution. They take the measurement of their sink, they run to the store, they sell plastic inserts. Put it in, you're good to go. But even though those plastic inserts you put, you have to be careful. A lot of times when the sink gets clogged, all the, uh, it backs up, so then you have problem with the thing. It might be all hamets coming up. It's an issue. You have to be careful. Okay? Um, another thing, what about metal? Metal is very easy. The same thing, you pour hot water on and you're good to go. Okay, this is for the sinks. Any more questions? Yes, Robert. Yes. If it was in a cold place and it got, did not get infested, you could use it. I'll talk about these things next time we have a class. There will be another class for things of kosher things, what's to use, what's not to use. We will have one on Monday, Bezrat Hashem. I don't want to leave it for later. This Monday we'll have classes on all different things you buy for Pesach as far as edible, what should be bought, what should not be bought. Now, what about chametz dishes or any chametz that we have, what, how, what, to deal with, what to do with them? We know that even those people who were for years throwing away all their chametz, from the house. For the last two, three years, many poskim said you should not do that because we don't know what the store, stores will offer us tomorrow. This thing might not be available. So we do a mechirat chametz, which we sell. Next week I will have the papers to sell the chametz. It's good to sell chametz in person, although you are allowed to go on the computer and punch it in, and they, they supposedly, they sell your chametz. It's better to do it in person because you have to make a kinyan. You have to, you have to trans, trans, give over the rights of all your chametz. Dishes we don't sell, we, we just put them away. But whatever you put away, Maran does bring down the halakha, Shukhan Aruch says this, not, not something, that you should put it behind the locked door. If you cannot put it behind the locked door and you want to leave them in your closet, kitchen closet, whatever it is, tape it down very well. And put stickers chametz on it and explain to your kids, this is not for use on Pesach. You don't want surprises. Your kids will surprise you. Make sure you lock it down. The best thing to Maran says, dishes that are chametz, Shukhan Aruch's language is, open a closet, put it inside, close it, lock it, and hide the key. Now, a lot of people, a lot of people who choose to sell their premises, they sell the premises because they're going away, if for whatever reason during Pesach they want to come in, it's not so simple. You cannot come into premises that you sold. And you didn't clean, you cannot really go in such premises. Okay? That is one thing that you have to be careful with. Yes? I have a birds, right? Birds? Yeah, can I give them the bread? You cannot give them bread on Pesach. Before Pesach, yes. Once Pesach, no. Don't give them matzah. Mikvah. But what? So give them something else. I'm sure this bird, there, is, there, is special, there is special thing you can give them. They eat. I don't know, millet they give. <laughs> millet, millet, they have, they have. Millet they sell. You do it. Yeah, you millet, millet. You give them millet. No, mikvah. Memura. So you give them, so you give them, I, listen, I have an ex experience. Experience. 
There was a person, an old elderly person. I know him personally. Polozio Tikade. He took the polov, he threw it outside like this. All the doves came and ate. Two, three hours later, busted their stomach. Are you serious? I don't know. I don't know. I'm afraid because Mioza, it gets bigger. I don't know. It might kill the group. If you don't have experience, don't do it. Because you might have a lot of Levayot to do afterwards. But after, if I have a boy, I say, boy, this is your birth for Pesach. He can feed them? He cannot feed them in your backyard. Somewhere else. He could choose. could do it in his backyard. Careful, you might lose your birds. Yes, 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 hotels, they have, they have hotels, yeah. Okay, whatever it is. Okay, I've got a little bit